In today's weather, spring has now started. It arrived yesterday at 4 a.m. Central Time, which means the days are now longer in the Northern Hemisphere than in the Southern Hemisphere. And we begin shifting into the warm season. In only a few months, we'll have to start watching the tropics for tropical cyclones. Hard to believe. So let's take a look at the weather around the country, starting with the East Coast. We have this outgoing system there heading out into the Atlantic. Trailing that is a mass of cold air across the northeastern U.S. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. You can see the ridging associated with a stagnating polar high across the southeastern U.S. and also thermal troughing in the 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness field. As we go further to the west, Alberta Clipper descending through Minnesota and Wisconsin. That is a dry system. There's no precipitation associated with that. The air mass starting to recover on the high plains. We're getting that cyclogenesis right there. But that will be overrun by this new system in the Pacific Northwest. That'll be crossing the northern tier states this weekend and bringing snow to the Great Lakes region. One way we can track all this energy is with the 500 millibar heights and vorticity chart. This shows not only that Pacific Northwestern system, but also that little impulse wave associated with that Alberta clipper. So going forward into the future, late tonight and early Saturday, a lot of that energy focused on the High Plains and the Northern Rockies. This other weather system exits the East Coast region by midday tomorrow and heads on offshore. This wave, however, continues to deepen further, and you can see it's starting to shear off there into an upper level low across Minnesota for early Sunday. Most of the stronger lift out there ahead of it across the Great Lakes region for Sunday, and then gradually exiting into Canada for Monday. Then we look out to the west, and we can see this cutoff high developing across California. That'll probably be associated with some very warm weather going into the start of next week. And we even get a little bit of easterly flow going, which tends to be more of a summertime type pattern. So we're certainly going to see some very warm weather next week across the southwestern states. And it appears that could be an ongoing issue for April, May, and June. This outlook was just issued. It's starting to look like a permanent map, isn't it? Well, we can make a few conclusions about severe weather season. A pattern like this will displace the jet stream, on average, a little farther north, which could mean a focus mostly on the central plains and perhaps an earlier start to the severe weather. Anyway, that's all idle speculation at this point. Across the northeastern U.S., cold. Highs were in the 30s in northwestern Maine to the 50s across the Northeast Corridor and a few 60s popping up in Virginia. There was a wintry scene this morning across New Hampshire due to wraparound snow behind this weather system and some very blustery weather as well starting to move through the area. Northwesterly winds up to 50 knots on Mount Washington. And that's what it looks like currently up there on the mountain. 14 degrees with those gusty northwest winds. It is starting to clear out there in New York and Pennsylvania. We have wind advisories across northeastern Pennsylvania this afternoon. Winds gusting to 50 miles an hour and gale warnings on the coast from Long Island down to Virginia. Across the Great Lakes, most areas were seeing highs up in the 50s today, some 60s in the upper Mississippi River Valley. Much of Lake Superior, under a heavy freezing spray warning all day Saturday, they're expecting strong north winds to come through. The arrowhead of Minnesota under a winter storm watch on Saturday evening through Sunday. And that's due to that system there in the Pacific Northwest, which will be arriving in about 36 hours. A sunny afternoon across the southeastern U.S., a very cold start to this morning. Temperatures were down into the 20s and 30s across the deep south. 
For today, we have a red flag warning across eastern Florida from Port St. Lucie to Titusville, Orlando, Disney World, due to northwest winds gusting to 20 miles an hour with a 20% relative humidity. And a fire weather watch extends into the Miami metro and into the eastern Everglades. Sunny weather in Texas as well, but with this kind of weather pattern, the extreme low relative humidities, we got to take a look and check for any fires, and fortunately, we're looking pretty good. I think yesterday there was a pretty good fire out there north of Houston, but I don't see that anymore. There is a large red flag warning across central Texas into central Oklahoma, into the Ozarks, and up to St. Louis. Fire weather watch for Saturday, West Texas, eastern New Mexico, due to strong southwest winds picking up 20 miles an hour with single-digit relative humidities. And you can see what we're talking about with these dew points. They are in the single digits from Clovis to El Paso, where it's below zero. It's pretty rare to see dew points this low. The only time where we see them actually drop below zero is typically when we have an extremely cold air mass, which brings in very dry air from the Arctic. During a springtime weather pattern, it is really rare. We need to see a lot of subsidence and a lot of origin of the air mass from northerly latitudes. We probably have a little bit of both with what's going on here. Look at that Chihuahua down to 5 degrees, 12 at Hermosillo. And finally, we start picking up some of the tropical moisture out there around, uh, what is that, uh, Tampico and the Southern Station, Ciudad Victoria, and in the Gulf of California. But on the plateau region, man, that is dry air three at Durango. Those are probably near all-time records, I would imagine, for the interior of Mexico. In the northern plains, no real problems. Some patchy, broken, overcast clouds. Central Nebraska, including the sand hills, under a red flag warning today. Northwest winds gusting to 45 miles an hour. Highs today in the 20s around Grand Forks as more cold air spills out of the prairies. Minneapolis, however, still looking for 50 degrees for a high. And of course, this weekend, this entire area will see that Pacific weather system move through with a chance for rain and snow in many areas. In the southwestern U.S., the Rockies, generally in the 50s with 40s in the mountain valleys. Fire weather watch for Denver and much of northeast Colorado for Saturday. Winter weather advisory continues in the higher elevations of the Colorado Rockies all day on Saturday, mostly above 10,000 feet. There could be snow and blowing snow in some of the higher passes. And we are starting to warm up across the desert southwest. With this very dry air, we'll see rapid heating, and we should make it up into the 80s in most of the deserts, probably looking at 70s for Los Angeles and 60s in the San Joaquin Valley. And looking at the Pacific Northwest, there is our weather system right there showing a classic baroclinic leaf. Let me outline that for you. That's going to be this thing right here. That'll probably show up better on the water vapor imagery. Yeah, there it is right there. Temperatures today, mostly in the 50s across the Pacific Northwest. This weather system, as we mentioned, will be crossing the northwestern region overnight and Saturday. The Cascades under a winter weather advisory tonight and also for today, about 4,000 feet, looking for 8 to 10 inches of snow in the passes with over a foot above 5,000 feet. Also some problems in the Blue Mountains along Interstate 84. A mix of winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories in the Bitterroots. The northern Rockies could see 2 to 4 inches in many areas above 3,000 feet. All right, we head out west into the Pacific, and we get a glimpse of that system moving onshore. Heading up into Alaska, they are looking pretty good. A little bit of rain along the coast in the Panhandle. Some gale warnings in Cook Inlet right there tonight, and then again Monday night, and freezing spray warnings in the Bering Sea, in case we have any viewers there. And I missed it on the analysis, but I think there is a little cold front right in here. So maybe some cold advection right there on the west coast of Alaska. Now heading into Canada, it is rather quiet. 
westerly flow through British Columbia, lee side trough in Alberta, a cold polar high across Saskatchewan and Manitoba, and a frontal system moving through Ontario. As this cold air moves through central Ontario, we are looking at flash freeze conditions, which means temperatures are going to fall about 12 Celsius degrees or 20 Fahrenheit degrees in only three hours. That area will affect mostly Nakina to Timmins and Matheson and over to Matagami in Quebec. And we're expecting about two to four inches of snow with that as well. In Nova Scotia, around Cape Breton and the Sydney metro, about one to one and a half inches of rain expected over the next 24 hours. And in Labrador, we are looking at some problems with a wintry mix. Could see ice pellets and freezing rain changing over to snow around Goose Bay and Cartwright. Now, I should give you an update on the stratosphere. We have had a sudden stratospheric warming event. You can see anticyclonic flow there across North America and a displaced vortex across Europe. This is at an altitude of 10 millibars, which uh, I think is up near 100,000 feet. So it's pretty high up there. The effects of the sudden stratospheric warming is a little bit indeterminate in spring. That's why I haven't really paid too much attention to this. Currently, temperature is about minus 30 up there. I'll give you the quick forecast right here. Very dominant anticyclone there. Displaced vortex out across Europe continuing. And as we go into the extended into April, it appears this anticyclone becomes established over the poles and this vortex in Europe moves over to North America. Again, the effects of this flip, you know, nobody's really going to know for sure. Probably a little bit more variability in the weather. The only definite correlations that I've seen are cooler than normal conditions across Alaska and maybe down the West Coast region. So we could see a negative long wave anomaly through here, a little bit more troughing, which could produce more of a southwesterly component through here. Again, this is just some speculation, some things to look for as we had in April. On this channel, we focus more on the short term and the immediate weather impacts. This time of year, that's going to involve the low-level jet and the moisture return. And we do have a low-level jet in place right there from Tulsa to Chicago, 50 to 55 knots there. But of course, this air mass very dry, so not really expecting anything. This is ahead of that Alberta Clipper. So going forward in time, that shifts on off to the east. We develop a new low-level jet. Now, this may start tapping into tropical air. There are 50s and 60s dew points down there in Mexico, but it is going to be kind of a difficult situation getting that moisture up here in time. So I think this may end up being a little bit on the dry side. So Sunday, kind of a veered low-level jet right there. That quickly moves on off to the east. It gets replaced by westerly and northwesterly flow. You can see the Gulf not really open. Maybe some flow there into West Texas for Monday. But overall, it's very meager. By Thursday and Friday, it does start developing there. But only 20 to 30 knots. Then a quick check of the precipitable water shows the country bone dry. By Saturday, some Gulf moisture coming up, maybe up to an inch in some areas by evening. And then for Sunday, this is going to be the convective weather day. 1 to 1.25 inches, maybe spotty 1.5 in the Mississippi River Valley. But the quality of that moisture is still a little bit uncertain. For next week, some moisture coming back up at only about 1.0 to 1.25. And finally, the richer moisture, 1.5 and above, coming up for next weekend, 28th, 29th. And we'll check on that next week since that is quite a ways off. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that forecast. Overnight, very cold in the western Great Lakes. Single-digit lows across northern Minnesota. Teens into southern Minnesota and Wisconsin. Rain and snow moving quickly across the Columbia River Basin and northern Rockies overnight. Snow increases in Montana going into tomorrow morning. That Pacific system will be crossing the northern Rockies Mostly rain up to North Dakota, but some snow around it. And as it hits that colder air in Minnesota, we'll see that snow picking up right there. In Texas, widespread 80s tomorrow, 84 to 86 in Dallas. We pick up a marginal risk of severe across 
Missouri, right in here, ahead of that warm front. And then for Sunday, the whole frontal system moving through the central plains into the Midwest, extensive mixed wintry precipitation in the Great Lakes on Sunday as that Pacific weather system moves through. Massive cool down for the northeastern U.S. We go from 50s to 30s and 40s for highs. Some cool air pushes into Oklahoma and the panhandles dropping highs into the 60s, but still near 90 for South Texas. And of course, on Sunday, we have a slight risk of severe from the Arklatex into northwestern Mississippi, southwestern Tennessee, mostly looking for scattered, strong downbursts and hell. In spite of what other channels may tell you, there's no tornado outbreak foreseen at this time. That doesn't rule out a small number of tornadoes. But if for some reason they bump that up, you'll want to watch for them to change that to an enhanced risk. Then I might be concerned about significant tornadoes. But for now, just a slight risk. Then we go into Monday. A mix of rain and snow across the northeastern U.S., snow mostly in the higher elevations of New England and the Adirondacks. Snow showers continue across the Great Lakes in that cold air advection regime. The southwestern U.S. starting to see 90s starting Monday from Tucson to Palm Springs, 90s, Phoenix looking for 94. And hotter for Tuesday, we're looking for 97 at Phoenix upper 90s all through the southwestern deserts. That's going to be the hottest day of the year, 70s in the Four Corners area. Much quieter across the rest of the country, some rain and snow through Virginia. And it's going to be the hottest day of the week in Texas. Dallas will reach 87 with 90 at Austin. Many stations in central Texas will see 90. Then for Wednesday, another surge of cold air coming south through the northern plains. The southwestern U.S. should see mid to upper 90s. This looks like a little bit of early monsoon activity. Probably a combination of some tropical air starting to move northward with those very intense temperatures. A new Pacific weather system moving through the northwestern U.S. Right now, it looks like that's all going to be rain. Snow levels possibly around 6,000, lowering to 3,000 for Thursday. And we get into the long range here. Looks like more snow for the northeastern U.S. This Pacific weather system moving across the Rockies. And there is the late part of next week. A lot of rain from Texas into the Mississippi River Valley, into the Midwest. And possibly another winter storm for Minnesota and Wisconsin. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. If you want to join us for the private supporter video on Monday, you need to get signed up on Patreon. Here is the link for that. Otherwise, we'll see you back here again on Wednesday. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.